Hello and how's it gone, Drone Man fans? Today we're looking at the history of Dunbar Harbour on the east coast of Scotland. Port at Dunbar itself is first mentioned in a 1555 charter as Lammerhaven, on the east side of the castle of Dunbar. It was a natural anchorage sheltered to the north by Lammer Island, on which the Dunbar Battery sits, and which is linked to the mainland by the causeway forming the southeast walls of the much later Victoria Harbour. The Old Harbour, which is also known as the Cromwell Harbour, can be found in the east of the port. This harbour is protected by a seawall to its east and north and dates from the late 16th century. The new, or Victoria, harbour can be found in the west and dates from 1842. Finally, there is Broadhaven, which was formerly the approach from the Forth to the Old Harbour but its entrance has been blocked, providing additional sheltered water between the old and new harbours. The sole entrance to the port is to the far west, into the Victoria Harbour, a passageway cut through the eastern walls of Victoria Harbour and spanned by a bascule bridge, which gives access to Broadhaven and the Lammer Island. Dunbar has long been known as a town of three harbours. Cromwell Harbour and Victoria Harbour are still vibrant today, but the site of the earliest harbour in Dunbar was at Belhaven Bay. Belhaven was recorded as a port as early as 1164, when monks from the Isle of May were granted access. The harbour lay on the eastern side of the bay, within an area reclaimed by the construction of a seawall in the 19th century. Nothing remains of the harbour today. A natural rock breakwater and a line of posts were still visible in 1841, and at this time, local residents remembered the remains of a stone jetty. By the end of the 15th century, the harbour at Belhaven Bay had silted up. It was possible to land a boat at the castle's seagate, but the approach was dangerous and exposed. While we're talking about Belhaven, Belhaven Brewery, if you're watching this, can you please get your finger out and make a zero alcohol beer for me? Thank you very much. There's evidence that Dunbar didn't have a harbour in 1548 from the writings of a Frenchman who came to Scotland with the French army sent to besiege Haddington in the rough wooing. Woo! He commented on the lack of a harbour which he considered could be built at a minimal cost. A harbour was finally built in Dunbar in 1574. It was needed because of the increasing number of small boats engaged in the herring fishing trade. It accommodated local and visiting herring boats and a customs house with a gauger, a customs and excise officer to prevent smuggling. Exposure to violent storms meant that the harbour was in perpetual need of repairs. In December 1655, a storm damaged the harbour to such an extent that the town petitioned Parliament for aid to repair it. They stated that the demolishing of the harbour by a great and tempestuous storm had left no safe haven for herring fishing, 
which was the only livelihood of many people in the area, Cromwell's government awarded £300 towards the cost of a new harbour. This resulted in the construction of Broadhaven and the old harbour largely as we see them today. In 1761, a coal wharf at the inner landward end of the East Wall was constructed and in 1785, the so-called Holy Pier opposite the return wall was built. Funding for this work was provided by the borough authorities who were permitted to levy a duty on ale and beer for a period of 44 years from 1719. Extensive work was carried out to improve the harbour in the 18th century, but by 1822 Cromwell Harbour was considered inadequate for the fishing and sea trade industries. In 1841 permission was granted to build a new harbour at Dunbar. The Victoria, or New Harbour, was built in the 1840s with an access channel cut through to the ruins of the old Dunbar Castle. Sometime after 1842, as part of the design for the Victoria Harbour, a cut was made in the causeway forming the northwest wall of Broadhaven to allow access to and from the new harbour. The original cut was 26 foot wide and was spanned by a metal bridge. The current navigation is 30 foot wide with a bascule bridge installed in 1860. Work on the new harbour was completed in 1844 but problems remained with the sea wall. In 1854 there was a large breach in the wall which was repaired at great cost to the town. Both harbours were, for a while, hives of activity, but the need for Victoria Harbour was short-lived. Ships were getting bigger, and by the end of the 19th century, they no longer called at Dunbar at all. The factor that probably most affected the harbour and seaborne traffic was the opening of the Great Northern Railway in 1846. Goods which had previously been transported round the country by sea could now be transported by rail. In 1886, a weekly steamer ran between Dunbar and London, carrying about 10,000 tonnes in the season. The remainder of the shipping trade consisted principally of inward cargoes of coal, grain, espartograss, timber, oil cake, china, glass and wood pulps. Dunbar had by 1888 ceased to be a port of registry. A regular trade was for many years carried on by sailing vessels transporting potatoes to London, the district around Dunbar being famed for the fine quality of this vegetable, which obtained the highest price on the market. Unsurprisingly, given its heritage and location, Dunbar Harbour is a popular visitor attraction today. The harbour is a trust port, responsibility for which lies since 2004 with the Dunbar Harbour Trust. Previously, the port was controlled by the local authority and earlier by the magistrates and council of the borough. It is the home port for a commercial fishing fleet offering moorings, fuel and water facilities for pleasure yachts. It is also home to one of the largest lifeboat stations in the area. Dunbar Lifeboat Station was constructed in 1901 and continues a service dating from 1808. A 15 foot high fisherman's memorial was erected in 1856 at the south end of the east wall of the old harbour by local benefactor William Brodie to a design by Alexander Handyside Ritchie.
It contains a barometer for the use of fishermen. Unfortunately though, it no longer works. That's all for now folks, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for uh, coming back and re-watching old videos, for sharing videos and for commenting and things, uh, whether it's here or on social media. We really appreciate all the support you're giving us. And also you're telling people and you're telling your friends about us and we're getting more and more people coming and watching these videos and it's, it's brilliant. We're really, we're really happy about that, so thank you so much. Uh, there's one thing you could do if you haven't done it already and that is subscribe. Um, if you didn't, we will basically boot you over the end of Dunbar Harbour. Now I'm only joking, we will only do that. But if you want to subscribe, we would love that. Anyway, thanks very much again, and bye for new.